You hate ads, I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this channel ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence. I'm Mike and this is the month of June and so that means it's time to look back at the month of May and the things that I was using that month that I bothered to write down uh, in my little uh, list of things. So uh, firstly, let's go ahead and take a look at the things that I inked up this last month. Uh, firstly, up here on the 11th, I wait until the 11th day of May to ink anything up. This is Andorillium Cuttlefish Brown and it is a very dark brown as you can see there. And also sometimes you can see a little bit of a green sheen. It's a really interesting color. Uh, this nib is pretty wet and I think uh, like there's the color kind of right there that is the most representative I suppose of the brown but it's got like a, a grayish greenish overcast. Pretty darn cool. Then we've got uh, over here Pelican M800. I inked it up my Colorverse Dakota Thunder, which you don't see as much of the green sheen here as I kind of expect you to. It's uh, just not as bright as it could be, but there is a lot of green sheen on some uh, on some papers. And you can see some of it pop in there. Uh, then I inked up this uh, Diplomat Arrow Purple, which is a really uh, pretty pen that a friend of mine gave me with Lamy Crystal Burl, which is a pretty shocking magenta there. Then we have here Troublemaker Butterfly Dream. We'll see this pen here in just a little bit. This is a re-inking of a pen that I uh, set up for Audrey a little while ago. She ran it dry and uh, I just wanted to try out that ink and that pen. So I just put the ink back in the pen. Same thing here with this Iron Feather uh, Swirly pen that I got Audrey for her birthday. This is uh, an Ackerman Dutch Masters ink that I wanted to try out, so I just re-inked a pen that she had finished. Then, up here on the 15th, Stadler Initium, which is a uh, really interesting, uh, where is it? Really interesting uh, resin pen that I got uh, this last month, and uh, so I decided to ink that up as well with Diamine Cult Pen's Lil Mickey, which is uh, also called Michael and uh, is a sheeny blue. Then my Waterman Kareen got a dose of Sailor Yuromiku Yoi, which is way darker than I thought it was gonna be and very interesting, like a super dark Seiki perhaps. We'll see how it goes. Then I inked up Sailor Pro Gear Slim, the lilac one with a big zoom nib with Birmingham Pinco's Sunburst. This is a zoom nib and it is uh, pretty wild. Uh, that pen is not in, oh, here it is. Right here, really pretty pen of Audrey's. The only zoom nib we have, it's not my favorite nib. I, I was reminded of that once I started writing uh, more long form stuff with it. I just, I don't love the way the zoom nib feels. It's just not really my jam, but this color is pretty banging. Then the Pilot uh, Custom Heritage 91, my maroon one here, which is uh, some special edition from Japan. Got a nice fill of KWZ St. Louis 23 Missouri Crawdad. This is coming up as the uh, official uh, exclusive ink for the St. Louis Pin Show this year's uh, um, uh, exclusive ink. Missouri Crawdad from KWZ. Really nice kind of interesting um, orangey color there. Then, uh, almost the very last, I inked up Vanessa's Gator Gar in a Pilot Music Nib. It's a mosaic pen. I love this pen. Picked it up a while ago. It's, uh, it's really pretty cool. And this ink is really interesting. It's lighter than I thought it was going to be, but that sparkle really does stand out well in this ink and it flows just fine. So uh, I'm getting to know this ink and we'll have a review on that here in a little while. And that's all I inked up in May which is for me, not that many things. Okay, next up, some pens. Uh, firstly, a non-fountain pen. This is the Zebra Blen pen. You can see up here, uh, Zebra, the Blen. These are really interesting pens that are made to be like kind of quiet and they have this little thing down here so you don't get tip rattle when you're writing with it. Like the, 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 the metal tip here doesn't rattle against the metal in the nose cone because it has this little dampener, which is pretty nice. And it's got this interesting kind of feel to it. It's got a nice rubbery grip here, which you can see is also already getting a little bit grungy. I've had this pen for a little while, but I haven't used it a whole lot recently. So I decided to break this one out. Three color multi pen, blue, red, and then black is this big one on the back, which is actually pretty pleasant. Like that's a that's a nice feel to to pop that down. It's pretty good. I think this is an okay uh, multi pen. It's not my favorite multi pen, but it's pretty good. It is a ballpoint, and um, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. 
Uh, next up, three fountain pens. One is, of course, this is a Pilot Custom uh, 912. I just had in my hands for the last month, mm, I don't know, a few weeks anyway, two weeks, something like that. Uh, the whole set of Custom 912s from Pilot. You're going to see a lot of videos of that pen. You're going to be sick of that pen, but I'm not. And so I went ahead and inked up um, this pen in the last few days. Uh, technically, this was a June ink up, but like... I was using the 912 so much for the last month, I decided to throw it in here. This has my Waverly nib on it, which is a really interesting upturned nib. And of course, there will be uh, videos about this on the old channel. So check those out in a little bit when those go up. And then these are those two pens that I inked up, which are Aud which were Audrey's. This one is from Jonathan Brooks of Carolina Pen Co. This is a really cool looking material. I mean, just look at the like the different layers and depths and swirls and colors. Really cool pen. Audrey picked this one up at the last pen show we were at, I want to say. Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. I want to say it was either Baltimore or Philly. I want to say it's Baltimore. Yep, Baltimore. And uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is that pen. I threw another different nib in there. She got it nibless. This is a Ryan Crusack nib. It's a Yovo number six, so a very common sort of thing. Very comfortable pen. Jonathan has changed the way that he does the sections. It's got a nice little uh, hourglass shape there, which is very nice to write with. I'm enjoying this pen a lot. And the nextly, this is our first pen from Iron Feather. And man, uh, Brian does good work. This is a really cool pen. And the more that I handled this pen after I got it for Audrey for her birthday back in April at the Atlanta pen show, I was like, mm, this is this is really good. Uh, it has this really nice inlaid like little coin up here in the finial that he makes. And then it's got this little conical end down here. The section is pretty darn wide. It's got uh, no uh, no gutters or anything going on down here by the threads. Just like a very clean pen, very comfortable to use, good weight, good balance, doesn't post. Well, kind of, I, it doesn't really. Uh, and the resin is gorgeous. Uh, this has been a very nice pen to write with. And uh, yeah, I'm liking it. I may have to get some iron feathers of my own. All right. All right, a couple of paper things. Firstly, uh, y'all know I love to rotate through post-it notes. I've been using these. Uh, I used these in a previous month. I had these uh, these post-its a while ago. Uh, I decided to break these out. These are <laughs> little uh, sticky notes from, what is it called? Just Knock Knock or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, knockknockstuff.com. And there are a bunch of different things like this. And you find them in novelty stores and that kind of jazz. And they're fun. But let me tell you, these are just not any good for fountain pens. They bleed and they feather and they spread. I wouldn't even use a rollerball on them, really. These are basically ballpoint, probably gel pen uh, notes only. So I don't use them as much as I use regular post-its because they just don't work as well with the pens that I use the most, which are fountain pens. And they just don't get along. So uh, keep your ballpoints on these. Keep your thumbs up uh, to uh, the design. Now go away to the paper quality. On the other hand, I've also been using this, and you'll be seeing this notebook a fair amount in my upcoming ink reviews because I've kind of decided that I'm going to use this for ink reviews for a while. This is a Nebula Casual Note notebook. It has, as it says there, 90 grams per square meter, ink proof, white paper, detachable sheets, 120 pages. You find them at nebulanote.com. I believe these are... Uh, like color verse that seems right to me but it's a really nice paper you can see there it does well with sheen uh it does pretty well with shading it is ink proof which is neat like you can see i did uh, water tests and stuff on this no bleeding uh the the water like buckled the page just a little bit but not very much honestly i mean that's not too bad for a, an un well is it uncoated i it feels like it's uncoded. But in any case, uh, yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of this. This is a dot grid notebook and uh, has these like little pale dots. Every page is perforated, which is very nice. I say check these out. These are not terribly expensive. Maybe 10 bucks, I want to say. I don't remember, but I, uh, I really like these. And I added these two stickers. Those did not come standard. These are just a couple little stickers uh, that I added after the fact. A little shooting star, a little planet. Seems like it goes with the nebula theme. Good stuff. Also good stuff is this. This is a uh, a sort of weekly, I don't know, I don't want to say calendar, but like kind of to-do list planner sort of setup. This is from WMS and Co. Inc.com, WMS Co. Inc.com. I got this from uh, Joe Crace, the gentleman's stationer's store, 
And uh, I like it. It's the one I'm using when I'm not using the right notepads weekly setup. I don't have as many things on my to-do list. I mean, it's still several things, but I don't have that many things on my to-do list in the summer. I don't have classes, like at least not face-to-face. I don't have as many meetings, all that sort of thing. And so I pair back from the bigger pages of the right notepad into this, which is smaller, more compact, and a little bit less expensive. And let's like just use different stationery. So down here at the bottom are just some like habit tracker things. Like, did I do this stuff so like did I work out did I clean the cat box did I journal did I take my pills you know things of that nature and like I don't know I haven't working out nearly as much as I should there's a lot of red dots there with the blue dots hey I'm doing those things so that's good and then just kind of stuff up here I put to do's and I usually put the date up here as well just because that helps me remember what the date is for those days so uh yeah pretty good you'll notice the weekend is combined and that's not great but it's been working out for me just fine I don't have that much going on on weekends mostly just kind of you know doing house stuff and weekend stuff stuff and you know whatever so WMS and co weekly pad 74 sheets that's over a year of weeks that's almost well, a year and a half of weeks that's pretty good uh, so yeah check these out over at uh, the gentleman stationer he has a pretty nice little store over there and then lastly uh, I've been playing that new Zelda game um, a lot and one of the things that Zelda tends to do and they've been doing it less in this game but in a lot of games there'll be like some vague hint that somebody will say about something and then you'll have to go and track it down or you'll want to I don't know get some materials of some kind and you're like I don't know where the heck to get that thing and so I've been taking uh, I've been taking notes there's this one set of quest lines where you like go to different stables and you meet a pelican and do like newspaper stories uh, what stores sell at various cities that I've been to uh, I take notes about like the villages uh, pictures for this one guy that I need to take uh, there's, uh, you know, a bunch of different little quests, some stuff about the depths, some stuff about like where dragons are and what the horse god wants from me, etc. Uh, and then just like some random like notes and hints about things that I need to go and check out that I'll just forget about doing otherwise. And so I went ahead and put them in this little notebook because I've been wanting to use this one. This is the Endless Recorder by Endless, uh, sorry, Endless Explorer by Endless. They, uh, make these and design them in India and they're, uh, they're pretty interesting. Interesting. This is cactus leather and it feels like regular leather and on the inside it's kind of suede which is neat and it has these uh, extra bands for putting in more notebooks and such and um, this is pretty good. I think it's going to stand up. It's sturdy enough and all that sort of thing. I don't see any real wear on it. I carried this for like a week or something at the end of the semester because I got it very late and then um, I've just been kind of using it here but it just you know I I fold it up and I put it over here and when I want to make notes I open it up and I go to the page and I make some notes. The paper in here is the uh, Endless Storyboard which uses their regalia paper and it is mm, pretty good. It's not really ideal for this use because a lot of times I want to write stuff down and then I want to put it over to the side. And you see what this notebook does when you let go of it, it closes itself. This cover is uh, pretty springy still, like it hasn't, it hasn't worn in. I'm not sure if I need to, you know, like break it in or or something but it's pretty big it's got a lot of room for other notebooks and uh it doesn't really want to stay open so that's been a little bit of a problem that's why i have this blotter page so i can put it in there and just like let it close itself and it'll be okay but this paper has a long dry time and this wants to close constantly. So it's been a little bit of a struggle. Also, uh, another thing I've noticed about this paper is it is very reactive to hand oils. And so when I'm writing in it, I want to put this down and put my hand on it and then write because if I don't, there will be places where I just can't. Let's see if I can find some real quick. Also, like, here's one right here. It's like, oh, there's some rumor about a beast. And uh, you can see my hand print. That's like skin <laughs> ridges right there. It just uh, just doesn't want to doesn't want to deal with hand oils. So it's not been great for this purpose, although I like the way the paper makes the ink look and it feels nice to write on. Dry times are long, hand oil is an issue, and this binder keeps wanting to close itself or this cover keeps wanting to close itself. So it hasn't been the ideal setup, if I'm 100% honest, but I do like the materials and stuff and I am going to keep using it because uh, I, I do like it, even though it's not ideal. All right, that's it for, uh, for May. I'll see y'all at the end of June, most likely the beginning of July because that's how this has been going. Until then, think about what you put in the world make it a better place and i'll see y'all later peace out